Hello, and welcome to today's Dota Credit Tip. In lieu of the Halloween festivities this season, we're going to talk today about Zombie Debt. These are those debts that these debt collectors are trying to come after you for that you don't legally owe. They're done, they're dead, they're buried in the ground, and yet they're trying to come after you for it. Today we're going to learn about our rights, how we can fight them on today's Delta Credit Tab. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to today's Delta Credit Tip. So today we talk zombie debt. All right, what is zombie debt? Zombie debts are those debts that these debt collectors are trying to collect from you that have died and they are trying to revive them beyond the legal amount of time that you actually owe the debt. Okay. Now in your credit repair process, there are two statutes of limitations that you actually want to worry about. The first statute of limitations, we're going to deviate for just a second and talk about it first. And that is how long a creditor can actually report something on your credit report. Now, the first thing to establish is what time does the clock start, right? The clock always starts on a derogatory account from the date that you stop paying the original creditor. It doesn't matter how many times they've bought and sold the debt since then. Okay. Also, the statute of limitations it can sometimes be challenged when the creditor makes a payment for you. Well, when would that happen? Let's say on a repo, right? You're, you've been making payments on your car. You stop. They repo it. They sell it and they credit your account the amount they sold the car for. Sometimes they want to use that date as the start date for the statute of limitations and you need to challenge that, okay? Because that just drags out how long they can report and later how long they can come after you for it, okay? But typically the date starts on the date that you stop paying the original creditor and can go for seven years. It doesn't matter if you pay them off or not. It can still stay on your credit report as a charge off for up to seven years. But that's not the statute of limitations that we're talking about today. Really today, we want to talk about how long they can legally come after you. In other words, how long they can sue you for the debt. Okay. Now, each state makes that determination, right? It is not a federal requirement or a federal guideline, except when it comes to those debts that are interstate, like portions of your cell phone bill, okay? Each state will determine your statute of limitations and each state will determine the statutes of limitations per type of debt. There are four broad categories of debts, not judgments, but debts that someone can actually sue you for. Okay. Once they sue you, the statute of limitations changes to a judgment statute of limitations, which is different. Okay. But for the regular debts, there are four types. The first are oral contracts. You're not going to have too many of those on your credit report. Okay. These are verbal contracts that you have. The second is what they call written contracts. These are either contracts that you have with your creditors or sometimes with merchants. Okay. Different statute of limitations for those types of debt. The third type, these are your promissory notes. These are the loans that you actually get from the bank. And sometimes they want to go from promissory to written contract, right? But the promissory notes are your car loans and your personal loans, that kind of thing from the bank. The last category are revolving credit or open lines of credit that you may get from your bank. 
they typically have a different statute of limitations for them. So again, each state is different and within each state, each debt is different. Gets to be a little confusing, especially if you moved around a lot. You need to determine what state you were in when you open the account. That typically decides which state's statutes are gonna be used. However, sometimes banks especially want to change the state to the state in which they are chartered, like Delaware or Utah, even though the bank you may have opened the account in was in New York or Florida or Colorado or wherever. Okay, A lot of times that's written in the terms and agreement that you got when you open the account. So you got to keep that piece of paper because there's a lot of stuff in there that you need to know. And this is one of those pieces of information. So we don't want to pay a debt collector or a creditor for that matter for debts that have exceeded the statute of limitations because at that point that you don't legally owe it and any payment is considered voluntary. Okay. The kick in the pants, however, is that the statute of limitations for most debts in most states is shorter than the amount of time that the bureaus will allow them to report it. Makes no sense, that's the system, that's what it is. But at least now you understand that yes, you may have owed that money at one point in time, but you may not owe it now. And also, if you happen to get that nice love letter from that debt collector or a nice little phone call, if they don't disclose to you that that debt is beyond statute of limitations, they have violated your rights as a consumer under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, and I strongly encourage you call us immediately. So, I hope this information helps. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe below. We try to come out every week on Thursday at noon with Eastern Standard Time uh, with tips that can help you with your credit repair process. More importantly, share, share, share this information because this is how we stay informed. This is how we make a difference. But most importantly, this is how you make a choice, make a change. Delta.